Oh my goodness, it is Friday night once again, and it, this is the Skeptical Help Bar. I am your adorable skeptical bartender, Kenny Biddle. So, tonight, tonight's a special night. It's going to be a fun night. I have a guest tonight, which is always good, because then you guys don't have to listen to me talk for two hours, which is good for me, because I love to talk, but I can talk, man. Uh, so, let me go over the rules. Before I bring my guest on who is patiently waiting in the background. I'm going to go over the rules as I do every episode, and they're pretty simple. So rule number one, this show is for paranormal-related questions in which I give you, in return, my skeptical opinion. This is my opinion. It's not representative of the entire skeptical community. This is just what this jackass thinks, and I give it to you. Um, rule number two is that I don't know everything, so please don't expect me to. Uh, don't think that if you can give me like a one line story and I'm, I'm expected to solve that, that's not going to happen. And there's going to be terms and stuff that I don't know. And it's just going to be, you know, I might have to look stuff up. So I'll do that. I have Google on the other screen. I can do that. But tonight I actually have an expert with me. So we'll get in that, into that in a, in, in a second here. Uh, rule number three is that this is open discussion. Uh, it, it's friendly discussion. It's for everybody. So basically, um, be friendly. Don't be a dick. That's the bottom line. Okay. Because we're all in this together. We're all trying to learn more. Well, at least I hope we're all trying to learn more. And that's why I have a guest on tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about psychics, uh, cold readings, hot readings, and a little bit more. So without further ado, I'm just going to bring them on and let's see. There we go. We have Mark hey. Edward. What's up, buddy? Hey, many things, many things. Many things. I can feel a yeah, vibration right now that we're going to be listening to a lot of far out stuff. <laughs> and that's going to be great. <laughs> oh, man. So, Mark, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read off your, your little bio here. I stole off your website. Um, Mark is a professional mentalist who specializes okay. in... Uh-oh. You ready? Okay. Uh, professional mentalist who specializes in the magic of the mind. He has spent over 35 years in world-class venues from high-end nightclubs and theaters to hundreds of private parties and corporate events. He travels internationally as a skeptical activist using his skills as a mentalist to teach and promote critical thinking. He's also an author of several books, uh, one of which I have right here. Uh, which is an autograph copy, which is cool. Um, I've uh, he also done yep. workshops. You've done workshops. I that's how I first met you, uh, Mark. It was a uh, it was a workshop you gave in yep. Vegas. Um, uh, and it was about cold readings and and learning how to do With this. Ray Hyman. Yes. Yeah. In Vegas. Yeah. That was that was the one. Um, so a quick shout out. Hey, Rich. Hey, JD, Bob, Shane, thanks for uh, for coming out. Your voice. <laughs> so, Mark. <laughs> Your voice is doing all sorts of strange things. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hopefully our connection doesn't go really screwy. Um, yeah. Your voice is scrambling all over the place. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it might be the connection because I know you're coming in a lot of – you're coming in very blurry right now, so I'm not sure why. if it's me or if it's you. Um, <clears throat> me. Yeah, I do that with my mind. I'm really sorry. <laughs> uh, Those who need started. to know will understand. But can they? Can they hear me? I think so. Can everybody in the chat room hear both of us? Oh, um, how are we coming through? Let us know in the chat room. Hi, Susan. All right. Let me see here. Kenny's voice is fine it's for what? me. Oh, uh, it sounds like it's your voice. I can't through. understand anything. It's all garbled. Oh, no, this is not going good. Um, it looks like um, it's my wife. I'm okay, and it looks like your your feed is the one that's uh, screwing up. Uh oh. Uh oh. Are you uh, connected right to the computer or your internet, or are you on Wi-Fi? Oh. Maybe I should have uh, headphones. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it might work, but if if you're if you're on Wi-Fi, that might be a slower connection. Uh, other than if you're plugged in, if you're plugged in directly, 
You usually have oh, a good okay. connection. All right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm, yeah. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch over to Susan's. Uh, I'll go over in the war room. Okay. So if you can just uh, stretch for like <laughs> three minutes, I'll, I'll, I'll be right in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can do that. Don't, don't go away, you guys. Not. I will leave this open. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch over to me for now. Um, oh, how's everyone doing? It's Friday night and technical difficulties. Maybe, maybe the spirits are screwing with us. I don't know. Mm. Let's see. We got Cora. What's up, Suzanne? Uh, Shane, how you doing? Yeah, it looks like everybody. Uh, everybody's kind of saying that it's it's on Mark's end. He's probably using Wi-Fi. And I've learned over the, the course of the last several months of using this, that the best way to do it is actually uh, connect it directly to your, uh, your router. So uh, let's see. Nothing works good over Wi-Fi. <laughs> I agree, JD. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have Verizon. Do I have Verizon? We have, we have Comcast. But uh, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do good on, on Wi-Fi. I have my desktop plugged directly into the internet so uh let's see oh we got a drinking question already hey ken have you tried a drink called bananas over you no i have not but that sounds interesting that sounds really good um i'm gonna have to try that let me see if i can get uh oh, all right mark is still getting ready here so i can take questions um until he gets back on. We're actually going to talk about psychics tonight and, and cold reading because he's done it. And, and I, I'll tell you this. I met him. I met Mark in Vegas. Uh, he was giving a workshop on psychic readings and, and how to do them, which was really, really cool. I mean, it was a packed house. There was, I would say there was easily like 150 to 200 people that signed up for this workshop and they had to just open up the room to get more people in, which is really cool. Um, and they gave you a manual, which I know I have it, but I got to find it. Uh-oh, I think he's coming back. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but he gave us a manual, which was great. It was like a, it was a good 20-page manual to, to go through. And uh, we actually practiced going through cold reading. And we partnered up with people that we didn't know. And we took turns reading each other, reading through like their clothing, their expressions. Stuff like that. So, I can hear them. Just listen in. Maybe they'll start talking weird shit. <laughs> I don't know why I can't mute his mic. I'm trying to, but it's not letting me. Maybe it is. Oh, there it goes. All right. So, let's see. Uh, oh, Cora says. Uh, the drink is very yummy. Banana flavored rum. I've had that and I love it. I really do. It, it's really good, good, good. Cynthia, <laughs> you always keep it so real. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Technical difficulties happen. And I've been lucky enough in this show where this is pretty much the first time we've had real, real good uh, um, technical difficulties that really screwed us up. So I'm not sure exactly what he's doing. Um, because he's supposed to go to another computer and I think he's got to log out of this one that he's on before he comes through. I did mute his mic, so I don't hear it anymore. Hopefully you guys don't hear it anymore. Um, but there is a delay. So as the comments come through, there's about a 10 second or so delay. Uh, <laughs> I love that, Tom. That's great. <laughs> that ghost voice is coming through. Oh my God, I'm possessed. <laughs> oh, wait. So let me see. Uh, I think I got him on here now. All right. So You're right there. boom. Hey. Nice to see you guys. <laughs> that looks better. Yeah. Yeah, it should look much that. better. That's okay. It's all good. I uh let me let him let let's close the other one off. All right, I'm gonna kick there he goes. <laughs> technology. I hate technology. It's always something, some little thing. 
Just staring at the clock, and then all of a sudden. Um, so you can hear me, yes. right? I can hear you much better Susan, now. Yes. Hey, I can't hear him. I don't know. Let's see. You got to turn the speaker up. Where's the microphone? Here we go. Let's see. <laughs> this reminds me of a commercial with old people that are trying to do technology. <laughs> Is this what you do? You're supposed to go through me first, Kenny. Oh, I'm sorry, Susan. So I can deal with this. You heard what she said, right? Go through me. Mark didn't tell me. Come on, that's got to be something really simple here. <laughs> oh my so, god! Put this on. Oh, this might help. Yeah. There we go. Can you hear okay, me now? Hold on, she has to plug it in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some psychic, huh? <laughs> I never said I was real. Never made any claims. Never. <laughs> oh, this is funny. I love it. <laughs> this, is like a, this is like a blooper reel. <laughs> I can't even. Hear- All right, now we're good. Can you yeah. hear me now? Hey, better late than never. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> this looks crazy. It's like a real studio. <laughs> your hands coming in from the sides, fixing your microphone. <laughs> yes, my assistant. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> We're in the war room now. Okay. This is where we do all of our all of our planning for when yes. we're gonna go and, and do a sting or something like that. So yeah, anyway. This is where Susan does her podcast too, right? Because I, I true. The background. Yes. So it's more feminine, you know, it's got the flowery look and everything. There you go. All right. I can so, dig it. <laughs> so let's sorry about that. Jump right into it. It's okay. Yeah, like, I, I was telling everybody it happens. I mean, it, it. I used to have all kinds of problems on the last podcast that I was doing. So yeah. it's it it happens. So no big <laughs> it's deal. Good, it's a good warm up, you know. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it it tests my uh, my skills at just you know thinking on the fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all right, now what do we do? Well, that's what cold reading is. So there you go. So all right. So I guess first. Let's talk about how how did you get into mentalism? Ah, uh, mentalism, yeah. Well, hey, Susan, can you just uh, fix the camera a little bit when you have a second? I don't want to mess with it. How I got into mentalism? Well, I, I grew up, uh, my grandfather was a magician, so I learned... I want to just so it, my head is not chopped off at the top, <laughs> <laughs> or my brain will, will fall out. There, yeah, that's good. That's so good. my grandfather was a magician, and uh, so I was always around magic. And my father was into advertising, so he was kind of doing, you know, lying for a business. And uh, so I was always around magic, and I always loved. You know, when I was in grade school, uh, they used to have these scholastic books, which are like, you know, the unexplained and, you know, were dinosaurs real? And they were usually like a short little paragraph, but it would be something that you'd go, wow, really? You know, so uh, Ross Blotcher got turned on to the same thing, if you know who he is. Uh, So I always always bought all of those. I had my own little bookshelf of these simple little paper books that were about, you know, uh, Bigfoot and although it was called something else then but uh, so I I got interested in the mysterious side of things a long time ago but I didn't know really what to do with it Uh, as I did magic I learned more about deception and misdirection and uh, how to uh, write a good script or a story because you can have a great trick but if you're boring no one will watch it So I had to learn to be going to try that new light. Oh, okay. (laughs) She's got a new light. (laughs) So, so all a (laughs) glow. I know. Hi. So, so, uh, then I, you know, I started working at the magic castle in 1975. I was always interested in the mind reading side and ESP and, uh, clairvoyance. And I had a lot of supernatural books. But I didn't really find out how magic was. I, I saw some uh, psychics perform, and I, but I didn't think they were doing tricks, but I was really interested. It was like, how are they doing this? I need to find out what's going on. So luckily, when I worked at Hollywood Magic Company in Hollywood, 
a lot of the pros would come in there to buy their props and things. And uh, then I met Jules Lanier, who was one of my early teachers. And he was just, you know, he took me from doing card tricks to doing mentalism with cards, which Ooh. that was kind of the bridge there. You know, I, I understood how to fool people, but uh, Jules made it so that I was empowering people. You know, it okay. wasn't just it wasn't just me saying, hey, I'm the magician. I can fool you. It was more like I'm going to pass this energy that I have over to you and you're going to make this happen, which was a changeover from standard magic because I had to let go of all the corny lines and all the put downs and all the shtick that the, you know comedy magicians use right and I had to sort of do readings on people to make the trick seem more fantastic so I added in the ingredients that I was learning about mentalism to my magic and then finally i had an incident happen at the castle where carl ballantyne i don't know if you remember him carl ballantyne used to do an act it was called that he was the greatest magician in the world but everything went wrong it was hilarious you've probably <laughs> seen it you just don't remember it he told me to make up my mind you know you're either a comedian or you're a mind reader but you're you're mixing the two together and people start to believe what you're doing and become uh, into it and then you destroy all that by like making some corny line or something right so it was a turning point for me because I just didn't want to do standard magic anymore it wasn't I don't know it was you know like I'll still do a kid show the money's there I am there <laughs> but I prefer a more, a more adult approach and adults are more interested in paranormal than kids you can't do a kid show with mind reading they don't get it <laughs> and i've had to do that by mistake one time i brought the wrong bag of tricks with me and that was a disaster so so the transition was a little rough so basically it went standard magic mental magic which is more dressy it has more props you know you still have the dragon on some painted on some goofy box or something you know then mentalism which is pure it's a pure art form to me because you're not using any props if you have to you're using an envelope or a pencil or uh, uh, something in your pocket that everybody carries around and you don't wear a top hat or make birds appear you you have standard a uh, business suit on you know so so then i went to mentalism and then in mentalism i learned because I worked in the seance room for many years up at the castle, I learned about doing readings. Be, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> if you're a medium and you're in the seance room, it's kind of expected that you know about those things. Like many times I'd be sitting in the room and somebody would say, can you read my palm? And you can't just say no. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and, and you can't fake it either. You have to have knowledge of these things that you're able to pass on as if you're the real deal. Hmm. So I, then I made that leap. Uh, and then I had what's called magician's guilt because even though it, it's, it's not really a trick, I mean, cold reading is a trick, but you're really getting into a personal relationship with people that doesn't happen with a coin trick usually, okay? So, and I really liked that. And I, I liked it because I could see that people warm to it much more than if I was gonna go, here, pick a card, any card, you know? Right. They wanna hear about themselves. They wanna hear about what's gonna happen in my life. What's, what's gonna be the next big break for me, you know? So here I am at a place called the magic castle and it says that clearly on the front of the building and people are like believing every word i say and so i just stayed with that because i made three times the money i did as a magician and i was Ill, able to build a ladder to climb on which is what my book is about where i said i am gonna go to the as high as i can go with this yeah there it is <laughs> also on audiobook and the audiobook i prefer much better because I had so much fun reading it and doing all the voices of everybody and all that. So that pretty much brings me to today. So now what I'm doing is I'm still doing the mentalism and still doing readings, 
what I do is I do just like the mediums do today. They're not in a seance room anymore. They're up on the stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now what I do, uh, uh, Susan and I travel all over the place. And what I do is I, I've learned, you know, I've learned my lesson. I open for Susan, okay? <laughs> Which is, you know, I can't, I can't come on after her. It's just impossible, you know? She has so much going on. So what I do is I, I come out and I do like 20 minutes of in-character mediumship. And that's why we get into the hot reads and the cold reads and all that. Okay. And then at the end, when people are hopefully their jaws are hanging open and they are just like, what the hell? How did he possibly know that? You know, then I'll turn to somebody and I'll say, you don't really think I talked to your, to your grandmother, do you? And then the reveal happens. Okay. So the reveal has now become part of the act. Before I didn't do that. I just did it straight. And that's why I wrote the book. See how far I could go. Right. Uh, so now I reveal what I did and depending on where we are, <laughs> we either get a terrific response where people are really happy and they applaud and they say, oh, thank you for teaching us that. Or in some places, people are really pissed off. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you were performing at the Magic Castle, which as yeah. you said, it says clearly on the front, the yeah. Magic Castle magic castle. castle it doesn't say omar's ashram or anything <laughs> on there there is no there's no spirituality for sale just alcohol and people right? were showing up yeah because they know it's a magic show right but still believed that you yeah. were psychic that well you were let's put it this way i tried to over 14 years when i was up there and i wasn't there all the time i was like the backup medium you know the way I did it is I, the other guy, the guy who was the one who does it all the time, he used these goofy rubber hands and he always made corny jokes. And the, the people at the seance table could tell that he wasn't real, right? Okay. I did not like that. And I don't like disclaimers either, which is a whole subject we can get into. I, I wanted to go for the jugular because the people <laughs> who I was hanging around during those years were some of the top psychic entertainers that's how they say it okay. in the world you know uh, geller was a friend uh, he still is but i don't tell Uri, my Uri people geller. that yeah Uri geller Uri. uh all all the people who i was working with uh it was it was discretionary as to whether you're going to tell people you were real or not so i was trying to really freak people out so it took a lot because when you come up in magic, you want applause, right? And that was one of the worst things. I hate hated begging for applause, especially when a magician goes, ta-da, oh. <laughs> and nothing happens. <laughs> I, I can't stand all those lines and all those postures that they make. So I learned real quick that in the seance room, when the lights come back up from the darkness, I wanted, I didn't want their applause. If I heard applause, then I didn't, I didn't do a good seance. I wanted the lights come up and I wanted the people be their mouths hanging open like <laughs> that was the goal. Unfortunately, nice. that is not the goal with the people who own the magic castle. They, the last thing they want is to have people believe what they're doing is real, even though there is the sign out in front. So it was quite a challenge because for a long time I was going deeper and deeper and, and I had, well, I can tell you many stories, but you know, one night I had somebody have a heart attack in the seance room. And Milt Larson, who's one of the owners of the castle, just happened to be there that night. And it was nothing that I did. I hadn't even started the show yet. I just walked into the room and saw this man lying on the floor. So it was, but the publicity from that was, I thought it was the best publicity I ever got. <laughs> but, but, but uh, you know, I, I, they came in at that point at the castle. They had no stairways or anything built for, uh, what do they call it, emergency stretchers or anything yeah. like that. So they had to take this guy down with the IV bag and everything down the main staircase. Wow. And people were like, what's he doing in that room, you know? <laughs> He's killing people. Oh well, my I was killing my audience, yeah. Wow. So and the bottom line is at the end, after they took him away in the ambulance, the family was still there and they're like, go ahead, go on. We paid for it. We want to see, we want to <laughs> see what's going to happen. 
<laughs> like, oh, said, we're not going to go with them to the hospital. We I, yeah, I said, them. nobody wants to go with him to the hospital. And they're like, no, you know, Uncle Uncle Bill would want it this way. And which leads to a very interesting idea for a movie, because what <laughs> if during my phony seance, he did come back? I want to see the show, you know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, All they, right. didn't like, they didn't like that. So I had to uh, I had to leave the castle because I can't once you learn how to do this, you don't want to turn back. You know? So we've got a, a couple questions here. Um, uh, I hope so. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna put some questions in as we talk throughout okay. the, the show. So um, Tom asks, has Mark ever been taken by another mentalist since he has become one? So I guess has anyone like impressed you or surprised you um, with with their techniques? I guess. All the time. All, All the time. time. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm usually able to figure out what they did, but it's not it's not the trick. It's the the storytelling and the in other words, the artifice of how each one of these steps plays into the next. You know, I can certainly still be fooled. I'm not saying I know everything, but for the most part, that's what I keep. That's why I keep interested in all this is because it's all old old stuff. It just gets re. Uh, recapitulated and and new reference points are added in right. so you know what i've got to get my glass of water so okay so yeah i you... can i can be i can but not taken in in other words the only person who can really possibly take me in would be there was a street guy who was doing three card money in london and i almost put my money down <laughs> he was that good, you know. Wow. He was really good, and I just was walking by, and he must have had <clears throat> fifteen people there, and five at least of them were shills, and they knew how to work anybody. And I like almost had a hundred dollar bill in my hand. I was, and then Susan <laughs> went, "Get over here! What are you doing?" Thank you. So I hope I answered that. Here's my water. Awesome. Uh <laughs> Cora asks, uh, does he ever just get pulled to a person to give a message to? Um, so, no. no. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. That would be what's called a personal reading, and I used to do those. But that's just like pulled to a person to give a message to. I, I don't know if, Cora, I'm not sure if you understand, but she, he's, not, he's not actually psychic. That I know of that he knows of i mean um, i may i may have things that happen just like everybody does from right. time to time like boy what a coincidence that kind of thing but i don't stop people on the street and tell them things about themselves okay. that to me is very intrusive and uh, even though people like uh what's her name caputo <laughs> you know? Teresa caputo yeah Teresa. she makes it look like she's just walking into a beauty salon and chatting people up but that's all stage so yeah I hate to tell you that because I mean, if I could, if I could walk up, walk up to a stranger and tell them something that actually happened, I'd yeah. be the most dangerous person on that street. So uh, my friend JD here has a question, which mm -hmm. is one question that I was going to bring up anyway. He asked, "Very can good. You, can you explain the difference between cold reading and hot reading?" Sure, I, I'm glad you asked because there is a major difference. Excuse me. Cold, uh, cold reading is convincing somebody uh, that you know everything about them, even though you don't know anything about them. OK. And it's based on training your mind to be a mentalist, which is what a mentalist does. And that is being observant, looking for clues or tells their shoes. What are their shoes like? That's always a classic. Uh, their hairstyle, their jewelry, uh, their general demeanor. Uh, I can usually tell pretty much everything that is going to stick with somebody before they even sit down just as they walk from point a to point b because it's like a snapshot it's like profiling i hate to say that but guess what folks even though it's very uh people don't like to hear that that's what people do we do it every day when right. we see somebody and we're like we cross the other side of the street the street although now we do that because we have to but it's just it's just assessing cues and then once you start to talk to that person remember it's a it's a, a listener it's an observer and a speaker relationship that becomes symbiotic meaning it goes in a circle and it feeds back 
And once you understand how to read what's feeding back, the way that a tiny little twitch of somebody's muscle in their face will tell you whether you're right or you're wrong. And they don't even know it. They, And it's really hard. I'm sure Kenny's tried this to go into a psychic and basically not move. Right. It's right. really hard to like be completely like. It, it is hard to learn. Yeah. But because of you, because yeah. of learning from you, I've been able to do that where I can I can sit there as a statue. And, and they basically say, the reading is over. Here's your money. Yes, right. Exactly. All the time. I, I Try either, it sometime, you know, I because. Back, um, I, or I'm told that they just can't read me. There's something right. wrong with the spirits today. They're not. Yeah. There's something blocking. And I usually ask, is it my skeptic or skeptical aura? You know, is that the black? And then they go, the door is right over there, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you I'm, really, I agree. You have to, if, if you want to do this, you have to be able to, what did uh, Bob Hope say? You know, do it with sincerity and you can't lose. Yes. So that's cold reading. Okay. okay. And you warm up and you chum up with people and pretty soon they are telling you your life story. It's, it's absolutely it's, amazing. It's, it's, it sounds like it's a very difficult technique to learn, but yeah. once you start trying it, it's amazing how much you really notice on people. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you have a repeat reading, which I had years ago, or somebody who I've already given a reading to, most of the time I just tell them the same thing I told them the first time. And, they're, and, I, and I say, don't you remember I told you about this? And they say, no, I don't remember that. So, I mean, a hot reading, a hot reading is what I'm currently heavily involved with because, and Kenny knows all about this. Yeah. Hot reading is when you gather information on somebody beforehand. So this is not the man on the street or the carnival tent or this or that, although it could be if you wanted to. It's, it's where you, uh, for example, you sell a ticket to a seat in an auditorium and when the people buy the ticket, they will use their credit card. Once they give you your credit card, you just look them up. They have their name. You have their name. You go on Facebook. You scroll back a few months or even years, and you pick a few outstanding things like uh, this cat had kittens. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Any anything that you see that stands out that they will hopefully remember, and you just make some a little crib sheet, some notes, or some people use an earpiece, which is they, then they have somebody backstage reading to them what the person has uh, has already mentioned. Uh, I'm forgetting a step here. So, uh, oh yeah, and then you have to be able to identify them. So uh, if you watch my infomercial that I did for a Psychic Friends Network, that was pretty revealing because <laughs> they took colored tape and put them on three chairs. And they said, you are the red tape. This other psychic will be the blue tape and the third. No, it was only two, a uh, red and blue. So when I'm walking down the aisle doing kind of cold reading things, and then I see the blue tape and they're going from left to right, I know that's the person whose question I have already answered in my head because I they somebody wrote it down and gave it to me. It's old school stuff, but it's basically that kind of idea. So people have no freaking idea how you're able to do it. In fact, one of my favorite lines that I hear all the time is, there's no way the psychic could have known that. And I always say to that, oh, yes, there is. <laughs> you know, because you can find out the most obscure information about people. You could find out somebody's first, second grade teacher, you know, Mrs. Craig is, is here, you know, and she wants to remind you about not chewing bubble gum, you know, and the person will just be like, and it's natural to do that. And other people in the audience, they don't know about all this, these techniques. So of yeah. course they're buying in now and they're going, I got to get a reading from this person. So one of the things I think we've all learned is the show as such is really just to bait people. They don't, want to make a lot of money they do want to make a lot of money from the show itself they want to get a hook in people and have them get a reading and then keep giving them readings until they're broke basically if they can they'll they'll take people for everything so the hot reading angle is really powerful and whenever we do a show we've been all over the world lately and it's very interesting to see the different responses to people uh when we're when we were in norway and we did the show 
people were just, they loved it. They thought it was one of the most funny, funny things they've seen because in Norway, they have a totally different approach to religion. They don't, they're mostly atheists. So they don't have mediums in Norway. <laughs> you know, their idea is once somebody's dead, leave them alone. They're dead. So right. they look at it a totally different way. Now here in the United States, sometimes when I do the reveal, people get really pissed off and it's like, <laughs> sorry, you came to this and it's called a skeptic show. Right. This is a skeptic show. I'm here to teach you how you can fool yourself. They don't like it because I'm poking a hole in their belief system. So you learn to like kind of look around the room and not only do a reading for a single person, but also read the rest of the room, have eye contact and find out whether they're for or against you. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and if they look like they're going to jump all over you, like, for example, I would never do my act in a church. It would just be like throwing mud in their face. But if it's a skeptics conference, anything goes, right, Kenny? <laughs> you know, it's like, Hell yeah. <laughs> and we've, we've done some. Yeah. 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 So also you learn that uh, with a, the bigger the audience, the easier it is. The, the bigger the, the group, uh, the, 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 the law of large numbers means you can say just about anything to a large audience. It's and then you follow that. Right. Yeah. It's what? Somebody Except, will raise their hand. No, Somebody yeah, you say something like, one of my favorite ones that's in one of my books is, one night I was working and I had almost done an hour, and that's hard to do. I don't care. You're earning your money by 45 minutes because you're running out of your bullshit, and you're having to rely on other things. And you don't want to be wrong. I mean, it's okay to be wrong a little bit, but one night I just said, out of the blue, I said, I see a clown in a graveyard. And the clown is putting flowers on the grave. Does that mean anything to anybody? A lady's hand goes up. <laughs> and I'm like, shit. What am I going to? This is supposed to be. I was at the skeptic track on at Dragon Con. And there's like 300 people in the room. And I was just getting ready to explain how everything I do is bullshit. You know, so I won't even go into that. <laughs> it's in my book. But you can have, you can. You can say anything and someone, if they, if they think you've got the gift, they will make the connection for you. And then you just ride it, you know, not in that case. In that case, I had to back up and say, gee, what a coincidence. And, and, he, and she says, and you also said she, he called me Sam and, uh, and no, my name is Sarah and he always called me Sam. And you said that, you said he calls me Sam. So I'm like two different completely abstract coincidences with one person. Wow. And she was not, she was, she said, when you first told me that, I thought I was going to throw up. So she wasn't going along with me just for the gag. She right. really Seriously. made the connection. Wow. So hot readings are, <clears throat> before I do a show, it takes about 10 minutes. That's why when I see these people who are so successful, and by now they have so much money and cash that they just have somebody do the research for them. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> when we do it, we we go back to the hotel room and we find we try and get a list of who's going to be there. Right. And then we just go on Facebook and 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 we take if we need to little photos of the people so we'll recognize them when we get to the the event. And that's very that, powerful that, stuff. That's a technique. And again, I learned it from you. That's the technique that I, I used. Um, I, I recently did a, a lecture with uh, Rob Palmer. And yeah. we, we did one together on psychic readings. And and during my part of the lecture, I started doing a reading yeah. on three people. I think three people in, in the audience. And yeah. I, was, I was nailing details like really good specific details not anything vague but yeah details makes and, it feel strong doesn't yeah. it kenny <laughs> i mean you saw the look and this was a group of skeptics They're yeah like, skeptics and they're still looking at me like how the hell did you know that right it's not and, common knowledge but it needs no. to be it needs to be and that's what susan and i are out to do right we want we want to get a tv show and we, we told people we are not going to give people the other side. We're done with that. You know, if you're yeah. going to say at the end, well, maybe he does have powers. We're not interested. We don't want we don't want to be involved with that. What we want to do is 
get down and dirty, just like these murder shows that Susan has been watching lately. These, but they're actually very interesting. Like she's watching this one now where they use they use DNA to solve crimes. Yes, I'm sure yeah. she's talked to you about it. And it's it's this woman, and she just she works out of her home. You know, she's not like running around like a police officer or something, but she solves crimes. That's all. And I don't think many people know how fantastic situation that you can uh, help people with uh, and that's that's the ultimate goal is we don't want to make fun of people who believe what do we know there might be something there we just we just think that if somebody shows if you buy a ticket for somebody to make something happen on the stage think twice because if they could really do that they would be running the planet and we know who's running the planet and he's not doing very well. You know what I mean? So, so a yeah. little, a little bit of common sense goes a long way in trying to get this headphone on. Right. I mean, a the little... pre-show pre work that you do. Yeah. Uh, I love pre-show. I have, to, for me, I love pre-show more than any magic I ever learned. So explain that a little bit. Um, the, the, what you do. Cause, cause I was amazed. I actually got to follow you around. Um, yeah, what, what, you, what you, was that now? It was you did a you you did something at SciCon where yeah. you, your workshop was you did readings, but right. beforehand I I walked around I followed you I mean yeah. I wasn't right next to you I followed yeah. you yeah watching what you were doing and right. you were collecting information right yeah so so I collected anywhere I can you know I mean I. Uh, you just have it's basically most of the work is already done before you go on stage that's that's the key to good pre-show and if i can mention my mentor in pre-show lee earl he that was a, a lecture that i saw many years ago and it was one of the best lectures of my life because he knew all the tricks about pre-show and as i just said all the work gets done before you go on stage, then you go on stage, you just walk through it. People are totally blown away, you know? And so, so what, what you, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. What do you, what do you do? Well, there's many, I mean, you know, I did See, a T I did a TV show once where they, they said, uh, they said, look, we got this guy in the audience and he just bought a new house in, uh, in Santa Barbara. And, we're going to make it look like he just got a random raffle ticket to come on stage with you. And what you're going to do is you're going to give him a bird's eye view of his property as you're standing there next to him. So they bring this guy up and I'm like, he just, you bought a new house, but you're not that familiar with it yet. And he's like, yeah. And I said, and you know, looking down from above, there's right outside the front door to the right is a huge palm tree and on and on and on. And he had no clue at all wow. because we worked with his secretary and she said, Oh, and the thing that really killed it was I said, if you go downstairs in the, like a big rumpus room, there's like a, I, I hear the sounds of a circus. And he says, yeah, there's a mural of a circus on the downstairs wall. Right. <laughs> and, and, the, and he, he he told he said to the audience, which is great, he said, only my secretary knows about that. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yeah, he sure does. So you just have to play the game with people and if and then you throw a few wrong things in right like you say, wait, don't step to the left, you'll step in the fish pond, and then the person will go, No, that's further down. So yeah. pre-show can pre-show is a visualization thing. That's what you're trying to sell, is that you can visualize this and that. Right. And uh it's really powerful. I mean, it can be anything from their dog or their car, color of their car. I did a TV right. show called Secrets of the Psychics where I walked from their car to the front door, you know. So, And what we did in that case is one of the people at the studio drove to that person's house because they had their address and just made a yeah. description of what it looks like. Wow. And it can be it can be stunning to the to the uh, subject. And it's sometimes more stunning to the, the medium because if you make up stuff, if you're willing to take a chance, sometimes you get a hit that there's no way I could have known. You know? Right. Now the question is, is he really psychic? No, I'm just playing <laughs> playing the odds of, you know, what's going on there. But I, I've seen you walk around a room and kind of just nonchalantly 
like walk behind people and yeah, listen, listen to conversations. Them. Yeah. yeah. And, and write, I see you write little notes down, like what you're back to them, like, huh. right. And then walk away. Yeah. And you use that. You use oh, yeah. That. I mean, it's, it's classic stuff. What's his name? Dr. Jacks. He had a really, really famous one where he would, he would go into the men's room and he just, go into a stall and make notes. <laughs> and then, and then as he, as he heard people talking to each other, he'd make a note of their shoes so that when he went by in the audience or on the stage, he'd look at their shoes and be able to identify that person. And wow. he was really good at that sort of thing. Wow. And these are, these are the sort of subterfuges that I've always loved. That's you know, ever true. since I was a kid, uh, <laughs> secret agent and mission impossible and all those those movements and those uh, choreographed uh, placement of objects and removing them. And, uh, you know, that's just, right. it's bad. It, it's, it should be illegal, but I love the, the artifice of it. Awesome. And pre-show is one of the things that nobody has a clue. If you do it right and you're able to act, use acting skills to yes. make it not too perfect. I mean, that's why when I watch old videos of Peter Popoff, remember him right oh yes yes he's ridiculous he's like i see mrs jane williams 2225 pine street <laughs> and that's no. exactly how he sounded yeah and he's going and he'd give them the at people that address and the phone number and yep. they're driving a white chevy and it's like you don't do it like that i mean but it worked which shows how gullible people are you know you might <laughs> say i'm seeing a white car that's enough with right. today's today's audience right. and they will take it and run with it i have a white car anyway uh, we got another question we got a couple more questions here um bob actually puts a question out since you were open about the truth about mentalism are you no longer welcome at the magic castle or am i thinking about another location no that was the magic castle you were but do yeah, you no, I'm, I'm i'm persona non gratis at the magic castle and it's probably one of the best things that ever happened to me because <laughs> You know, that was not a good career choice. I mean, it was when I was in my 20s and I was strutting around, you know, in my satin <laughs> suit and <laughs> pretending that, that I was like Doug Henning or something. It was okay, but I I just can't reveal that they're right. not nice people. They are not. To me, they treated me. I hate to sound like Trump. They treated me very, very badly. <laughs> But they did. And that's because they don't want a dark warlock there. They want somebody who's goofy and funny and leaves no question as to whether they're real or not. So that's not uh, my game. I don't know if you've seen this, but Suzanne, oh, yeah. asked, what do you Leap think of the movie? Faith. Leap of Faith? Oh, I love that movie, especially the part when the kid says, are you real or are you fake? And Steve Martin says, maybe I'm a little bit of each. Who cares as long as I get the job done? There you go. Those are my watchwords for a long time because I it's really hard for me to lie to a little kid. You know, I, right. I, I just don't like to do that. If I'm going to lie to him, I'm going to do a card trick or something. You know? <laughs> but I'm not going to say, Grandma's standing behind you and she wow, wants to yeah. tell you that you better get your grades up or something. I mean, I've had parents come to me and tell me, you need to tell him this. And I'm like, ah, that's your job. I'm not going there. And on, on the other hand, I have told parents – about their kids in a reading and they come back to me and they say exactly what you said happened that's why we're here tonight we want to wow. hear what you have to say about little johnny now and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> uh joe asks thanks what suzanne <laughs> what was your favorite moment on stage or trick of which you were most proud of so favorite moment on stage and yeah. or what what trick are you most proud of I never really thought about it. There are so many things that happen in, in when you've done many years of stage shows and you've picked the wrong. Uh, I, I got one. I actually have one. And this may be one of the reasons I'm not at the Magic Castle like I used to be. Because I don't freaking care anymore. I, you know, I'm at the point in my life where it's like I'm going to do what I do, entertain people, and that's it. So one night, <clears throat> and if you've been to the castle, you know they have very late night shows. The last show is 12.15 at night, and 
I'm there trying to do mentalism, mind reading at 12, 15 at night in, <laughs> in Hollywood. And the bars open there at five. So it's really, that's that right there is abusive. Yes. <laughs> Put the mentalist on early when people are having drinks, but not when they're totally wasted. So anyway, I'm in this room. And uh, you're, one of the rules of showmanship, <laughs> I don't know who told me this, but you're never supposed to look out between the curtains at the audience. Oh, that's bad. Don't do that because it brings bad luck, you know. Uh -huh. But I was like, I'm like, it's 1215. I want to get out of here. Let's do that last show. Oh, now here's a deal is I, I've, I've done this for many years is I keep a cantaloupe backstage. You making a note of this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a cantaloupe from the store and okay. I get it backstage. And the idea is that is for the person who like wins the prize for, for either doing such an amazing thing or just being the biggest jerk ever. You know, okay. it's like you get the cantaloupe and they get the privilege of taking that out into the magic club. And people are like, what the, <laughs> what's with the cantaloupe? You know, <laughs> so I've got it backstage. I'm ready to go. And I look out the curtain and I see the room is only about half full, which is normal for late night. And, okay. but right down in the front, here's this guy. And he's like, obviously completely wasted already. He's got his coat off, which is against the rules at the castle. He's got his tie off. He's got his shirt unbuttoned and he's just lounging into the chair. You know how you do like, you're mm -hmm. almost asleep, but not quite. The only reason he wasn't asleep is because he was balancing this huge tankard of beer. You know? the kind <laughs> Never of, spill your beer. <laughs> yeah, the kind that has a round bottom on it, so you can't set it down anywhere. You have to drink right. it, right? And I go, oh, shit. This guy's going to be a problem. <clears throat> so normally you try and avoid people like that, but I was in a, one of my moods, and I just went out there, and I – did the rest of the act and then when i got to the last thing i said i need somebody up here to help me <laughs> can you see what's coming yeah <laughs> and hey I'll, I'll help you i'll help you and i said i my first instinct was like no way in the world are you going to choose this guy to come up he's just going to make things difficult <laughs> so by now it's like 12 30 and he's sipping on his beer and then I thought about it for a second. And I looked around and the rest of the people in the audience weren't that interesting. <laughs> they were just like, you don't want somebody like that. Yeah. So I said, okay, dude, I will let you come up on stage with me and work with me. But only if you can drink that whole tankard of beer in one gulp. So that goes, sure. Go, go, go. He drinks the whole thing down to the bottom. I say, okay, come on up here. And everyone is thinking that guy's going to throw up all over the state, right? <laughs> he could barely stand up, but he came up and he, his pants were falling down. He was just a huge, huge disheveled mess, you know, but you know what? He followed through. He did everything right. The effect worked. He sat back down. I was like, I have something for you. <laughs> So I go back and I give him the cantaloupe. The crowd went wild. They thought it was just like, what? What is he doing? What is the cantaloupe? So, uh, but he took it and he walked out. So I think that was the last week I was there because he might've gone somewhere else and caused quite a problem. There are many reasons why I'm not at the castle. Number one, I don't want to play that game. It's boring. 21 shows a week. They throw you a lousy dinner and a couple of drinks. No. If anyone from the castle is listening, no more. <laughs> oh, That's another reason I moved out of L.A. Okay, next question. Or Oh, so um, Kathy says, so basically you cheat. <laughs> yes, I do. Big, are you surprised? Did you think that uh, people say that all the time? They go, hey, if you're a real psychic, why don't you buy a lotto ticket or go to the racetrack? Good thinking. This yeah. is what we try and teach people in critical thinking. But they say yeah. it as if it's a snide remark. They don't understand that what I do is entertainment. Yes. That is the difference between a psychic and a mentalist. A mentalist does his show. You drink your beer. You get a cantaloupe. You go home. <laughs> a psychic wants to get a hook in you. So they are looking to 
find a way, find your weak spot, your Achilles heel, and then drill into it, but just enough so that it stings a little bit. But they want to leave it open so they can come back and make that hole in your gut bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's really, their shows, like I said, are just an advertisement for what they want to do to you. They're not trying to help you. They want to help themselves. If you got a psychic that helps you, I got no problem with that. But as soon as they start saying, you know, I see a, a dark cloud, you must bring me $2,000 in an old sock, but be sure to bring the other sock with you. You know how the sock switch goes. <laughs> <laughs> The gypsy switch, they say, bring, <laughs> bring, me, bring me an old pair of socks, and they keep one, and then they, the next time you go, they say, bring, and you don't know what they're doing. They say, right. bring $1,000 in cash, and they, they put it in the, they, I don't know, you must know this by now, right? <laughs> they, they put a big wad of paper in it, and then they tie it up, and they say, don't, don't untie this till next week, and they, they say, put this under your pillow, and sounds awful but the person who's a believer takes it home puts it under the pillow meanwhile pillow meanwhile they got the thousand dollars <laughs> yeah in another sock that they switch and they so they used to just leave town that was it that was all they needed to do it goes yeah. on and on and we've seen a lot of that i mean i I've, i come across them i post those articles whenever i see them i know i, I get uh, some from ben radford he he likes to post them yeah, he, Ben knows. He's investigated them a lot. Ben um, knows where all the trap doors are. Hi, so Ben. Question from Ted. What is his belief in psychics? Zero percent or question mark? You know, it always comes down to a percentage with everybody. It's like, <laughs> I will tell you what I believe personally, but I want to make sure you understand this is just from my own observation. Other people may have totally different points of view, and I'm sure they do. But I, um, And then you can think about it the next time you consider going to a psychic or especially one of these, these big shows. If you want a good seat at a big show, they're like $165, you know. Those are the good seats. Anyway, my opinion is that 95% of the people who are out there doing this for a living – are complete charlatans and they know exactly what they're doing and they're taking full advantage of every moment they can and some of them are very good at it okay the other five percent i like to break down by splitting it in half so 2.5 percent are people who are freaking nuts okay they they can be schizophrenic you know schizophrenic people hear voices telling them to do right. things. It's not that unusual. Or they're off their meds or they're, they have delusions. Plenty of people have delusions, especially today, because the worse things get, the more the delusions come out. So that's the people who are just n nutty, you know, and they can be really dangerous because they, like Sylvia Brown would just say the most awful things to people and people believed it because they, they reasoned, well, she's so awful. She must be real, you know, yeah. go figure. Now we have the, the last 2.5% to fill in the, uh, what do they call those pie graphs? I don't know the scientific <laughs> word for a it. Slice. <laughs> yeah, a slice. The last tiny little slice are actually people who have very in tune intuitions and have trained their mind to trust their intuition with what they say. Uh, they can be spiritual, not necessarily. The point is they're compassionate, kind, and helping people, right? Call it psychic, call it cosmic. I don't care. The point is they don't charge you money for it. And don't say my psychic doesn't charge me money because he's getting something. He's setting you up. But if somebody just gives you, you know, now we have life coaches. I love that one. Okay, it's like... Whatever you want to say, if that person is compassionately helping somebody and they're not trying to do a scam, sure. Some people are just more intuitive. I, I like to tell the story of the old lady at the circus. Okay, You see this wizened old woman and she's got her earring and her babushka on and she's sitting at her little table and you walk up to her and 
as soon as you sit down, she tells you something really amazing about yourself in your or, or your past, and you are just blown away. And I, I never can understand why people don't expect that. This woman's 85 years old. That's probably all she's done her entire life. And she learned it from her mom, and her mom learned it from her mom. So are you surprised that she knows some shit about you? You know, I mean, <laughs> we are more alike than we are different. And when you do something like this for 20, 30 years, you get pretty good. So that's why I say there's a tiny slice of people who they're not out to make a living or, you know, they work in carnivals and they're, they're still grifters, but on the, on the, uh, the bell curve, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty, uh, harmless. Uh, although I really shouldn't say that all of this stuff is dangerous. And I, I, I just feel sorry for the people who are doing good out there and they may not even know it. They just have knowledge. It's nothing, it's nothing supernatural. But when you balance the 2.5% against the 97.25, is it, is it really worth it? See? So right. I hope that answered that question. I, I see a discussion going on in the chat room between uh, two people about cheating. And, uh, well, there's a comment about if people like you that are up there, even if you have a disclaimer, you're still yeah. cheating and it's fake and fraudulent. Um, but we, we see things, I mean, honestly, we see things as, as entertainment across the board because mentalists, when I, when I see them, you go to a show, they don't, they're not pretending to, they're not, they're not trying to tell you, Hey, we're talking to dead relatives, right? It, they're, they're presenting a show and right. you're paying to see a show. You're paying to be entertained. Whereas when you go to pay, when you pay to see a psychic, you're not paying. They're not presenting it as entertainment. They're presenting it as if they're really talking to your loved ones. Which, That's right. Unfortunately, it, it, as far as I can tell, it's bullshit. Yeah, and, well, and it, also when you're paying money. when you're paying one hundred and sixty five dollars to hear something about somebody from your past or future or whatever. Yes, you gotta you gotta have some payoff somewhere uh, to to help increase the belief. So. To me, it's just, it's, it's a matter of, what do they call that thing in the stage? The proscenium. It's a matter of the venue. It's a matter of your intention and the venue. In other words, if I, I used to have an agent who used to book me, say, I want you to play it for real. And I'd say, no disclaimer. Oh, absolutely not. These people, they want to see you play the real deal. So I'm not going to, back then, I'm not, I wasn't going to turn down that kind of job because it wasn't my job to educate those people. Now, if I go to a skeptic convention, which is pretty much all I do, you know, I'm going to share my secrets because that's what the venue is about. So I've done seances, many of them, where I played it totally in character. The people love it. They're to they know it's a trick, yes. you know? And even though, even though there's sometimes when there's 13 people and I don't know any of them, there's bound to be three or four people who are believers. But I don't have the time or the intention to sit down and show them all my stuff, you know. So yeah, and also when we do these stings, mm -hmm. one of the one of the reprehensible parts of doing it for us is that we don't go into these kind of shows where psychics are doing stand-up routines, and I and I call them routines and stand up and say, you're a fake, you know, you need to, because you're just, the people, you're alienating yourself, they'll just throw you out. Right. Uh, they don't, they don't understand. They have paid a lot of money to be there. Get that guy out of here. So what we do is we lie to the scammers. We pretend that we are believers. You know, we wear pictures pinned to our clothes and we, we have a tissue in our eye and, you know, we sniff a lot and you've done it yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, I was, yeah I, so, I was so we, we are lying to to the right people so i don't see in any any sort of moral dilemma there because that's how you catch a criminal is you bait the hook and if they take the bait they're done so yeah. that's the world i live in and it we're swimming upstream aren't we kenny yeah yeah so, it's, it's, it's a tough swim um but i do want to say that i i've attended one of your seances which one and the one in vegas 
It was in Vegas. Yeah. In the church. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the chapel of the, uh, the hotel. And I got to yeah. say, it was one of my proudest moments. Really? I mean, it was, it was still, it was the first time I had really met you. And, yeah. And okay. I remember I sat directly across from you because yeah. I wanted to watch you. I wanted yeah. to watch what you were doing. And I, I remember saying you, you did something. I forget which trick because you had like you had the um the the chalkboards out, um, yeah, and then you had a, other things, other props out. The and bell. Like, Let me I see. I, I think I asked the question, and you, you had this look like, "Oh, this is the motherfucker." <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, and you right. came over. You gave me rope, and you said, "Hold That's on to right. the rope yeah. and don't move your don't hands." Don't let anymore. go of it. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like. God damn! At a skeptic conference, I'm getting called out. <laughs> this well, is no, what, it, what, what it was is, is as a magician, you learn if you have somebody who's decides to be your adversary, and you know you're going to have trouble with them, give them something to do, <laughs> and then they can't. There's not you're standing, sitting there holding those two pieces of rope, and the rest of the people in the circle are like, if he lets go of that rope, I'm going to be mad at him. You see, right. there used to be a magician uh, in vaudeville. I forget his name. He would bring the bring the heckler up on stage and give them a block of ice to hold on to, which was just brilliant. Because the person's like, "Oh man, oh oh," you know. It's just that's this right. part of the showmanship. Yeah, I like a good heckler. I I really do. I will. Let me rephrase that. I don't like a heckler. I just find that they can take the show in a different direction. And if you can right. get them involved and having a good time. That becomes the show. Yeah. So I was ready to make you part of the show, but you didn't. You didn't go any further with it because you were busy now. See. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I didn't want to be that guy. So <laughs> I, I'm like, all right. <laughs> there's always a that guy, unless you're, <laughs> unless you're at a well, it, it can happen anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Bob says when I watch a mentalist, I don't believe them. I am sitting there trying to figure out how they do it. Same yeah. with magicians. I have Penn and Teller to thank for that. Well, that's yeah. good, but it's it's sure you're not getting the same sort of enjoyment that the other people are. And that's right. Like for me, when I first started teaching magic, I'll never forget it. The end of the five weeks, this little la uh, Asian lady comes up to me and she goes, you've ruined all magic for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you bought the ticket. Isn't that what you wanted to do was learn right. magic? Yeah, but I just can't look at it the same now. So that's, it's kind of too bad, but that people make choices. And yeah. when you, when you see Penn and Teller, you make that choice and you know, they think they let you think you figured it out and then they turn around and fool you anyway. So there's all sorts of, of approaches to it. And once you magic is, is I'll give you the other side of that. The flip side is magic is, a way of thinking and this is how i sell it when i try and do a pitch for something is if the way of, a way of looking at life teaches you to focus on instead of the hand that's doing something over here you learn to look at what this hand is doing instead of this is the right this is the left you look at the left hand when you're supposed to be looking at the right you can life and how people sell used cars and they yeah. switch and all these things that are part of the misdirection of magic. So, yeah, I'm, it's disappointing when somebody gets their uh, dreams kind of adjusted, but yeah. that's what they wanted. And now they're going to look at everything differently. OK, so you can thank Penn and Teller and whoever for that. But by that, by the same token, it's better to just sit back and relax because most of these people are so professional you're not likely to figure out what they're doing. You're just going to get frustrated. So just go with it. Yeah. Entertainment and not, you know, a job. <laughs> yeah. I think when, when I do go to a show, when I actually buy a ticket and attend the show, I, I do that. It's, yeah. I let it go and just like, Hey, you know, let yeah, me enjoy you can, it. You can lose sleep over it later. Yeah. If you, if you yeah. must. If I see it on TV, I am kind of like what Bob was mentioning. I sit there and, you know, I try to figure it out. I, I let the first pass go. I'm like, yeah. all right, you know, if I don't catch it right away, then, you know, I enjoy it. And then yeah. 
that's when I rewind it. I'm like, how did he do that? How did I want to figure this out? But remember, um, magic magic comes from a background where you don't get to rewind it. Back in the old days, you you wouldn't be able to do that. And that's why I love Houdini because what Houdini it's it's like this. I'll try and make this clear. When you go and you see a really funny comedian like Jay Leno or somebody like that, and you hear a really funny aside or a one-liner, you think that's really good. I gotta remember that. That's funny. <laughs> and then and then right after he punches again with another really good line, and you go, that was pretty funny too. And then another and another and another until finally you just sit back and you say. That guy's a pretty funny comedian. <laughs> See, that to me is kind of the dividing line. If I'm watching magic, at a certain point, I know the guy's a professional, and it's pointless for me to try and follow and figure it out. Just take it all in and then make your decision and pinpoint things. And, and the right. word is called deconstruct. That's what I learned from my teachers. When you deconstruct something, you can put it back together. Uh, what do they call it in alien technology? Uh, oh, retro. Um, um, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank oh, God man. we forgot that word. Back engineer or whatever. Reverse it is. engineer. Reverse, yeah, engineer. reverse engineer. That's all you have to do. But it, it it's like it's kind of sad, really, because. I hear people, they say, I don't want to know the secret. And I'm like, good. And I'm kind of worried about that. And then other people are like, I must know the secret. That worries me more because magicians go to a lot of trouble to to not have you think like that. Why not right. just let them? You don't worry about a film, do you? If you see some con con continuity things or something. I know people that are so picky about that. It's like, right. So you did mention earlier in the show about disclaimers. And yes. To get into that. So oh, don't get me started. What? You know, can you give us give us a condensed <laughs> now, version? Now we're going to start and get to get into trouble, but that's okay. Let's let's go. I I, I am no stranger to trouble at all. <laughs> so okay. Do you, do you want my do you want my opinion on it, or do you want to know why? Or I mean, what did somebody ask a specific question about it? Uh, I know. I, well, I know there was there was back and forth in the chat room um but <laughs> i mean more about because you had mentioned it earlier in the show um about disclaimers that we can come back to it so what's your i guess let's start with your opinion what, what's your opinion of giving a disclaimer i don't like them okay why uh, i have a great line that doc hilford wrote for me because i asked a bunch of magicians when i wrote one of my books about disclaimers and this gets a lot of flack but you know Doing a disclaimer, especially in, in a seance situation, is like uh, being in a very fancy French restaurant and then right when they're about to serve the main meal, the chef comes out and says, this came out of a can. <laughs> so, I, I mean... I hear you, yeah. It's just, unless you have to, unless somebody says, listen, I'm going to have some very religious people here and I would like you to explain that what you're doing is just an entertainment, then I'll do it. But otherwise, it takes all the heat or all the air out of the balloon. It's just, that's my opinion. I mean, it's it like- kills the ambiance. It, yeah, it unless, you, unless you're clever, like my dear friend, Doc Shields, who was one of my teachers and still a really good friend over in Ireland, he does a double, double whammy. He says- he says, by the way, I just want you to know, I don't do exorcisms. I don't do lotto tickets. So don't come and talk to me after the show. I don't want anything to, he makes it, he protest, protests too much. Okay. So the, <laughs> he's making a disclaimer, but he's making it in such a way so that people, a lot of people will say, wow, he must really have something because he's really uptight about it. Yeah. And, and the ultimate thing about disclaimers is you cannot win. You cannot win. If you are a competent performer and you do a good show, you cannot win because there's always a certain percentage of people who are already believers and they're going to believe whatever they want, no matter what you say. In fact, mm -hmm. to that end, one of the things that Susan and I have been discovering about the media, oh, the <laughs> media. And it's very frustrating. Like I will do a TV show and they will ask me to explain the famous one is the brain games Ouija board. You've yeah. seen that, haven't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So 
and they're a great show. I thought that was one of the better shows out there, but it completely failed in our case because what we did is we started by, we said, this is the Ouija board. I'm going to be your uh, facilitator. I'm not going to touch the planchette. You guys are going to do it all. And we interviewed each person, right? Do you mm -hmm. believe in do you believe in Ouija boards? Nah, not really. Do you believe in Ouija boards? I'm waiting to be convinced. Do you believe in Ouija boards? Oh, yeah. Do you believe in Ouija boards? Eh. <laughs> so most of the people were not into it. So, okay. So now we, I summon the spirits and I, I say, I'm not going to touch anything. Let's see what happens. Spirits. And I'm looking around at them and I'm, it's like, they're already believing and nothing has happened. Right. They start spelling out all these names. Oh my God. Who's Diane? Oh, she's that girl that died in the car accident. Oh my God. And that planchette was moving all over the table. I mean, it was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. So then we stop. We go, well, let's just stop for a minute. Now how many people believe in Ouija boards? I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm almost convinced. I do. <clears throat> I said, okay. Let's. Then they did a commercial break. Then when they came back, I said, and one of them was somebody's grandfather who she wanted to sing this song with. And she, she saw the letters spelling out the name of the song. <clears throat> so when we came back, I said, we're going to have another session. Only this time, everybody put on one of these blindfolds. And they all put the blindfolds on. And then I said, all right, your grandfather, he certainly knows the year that he died. She <laughs> said, yes. And I said, you know it too, don't you? And she says, yes. So I said, let's summon him. Grandpa, spell out the name or the numbers for the year that you died. And they're like very tentatively going, going all <laughs> over the board. And they're not, they're not stopping anywhere. I said, you guys have to stop somewhere. This is only a half hour episode. So they're like, <laughs> finally, they stop on a blank piece of the Ouija board. There's nothing on it, right? So I go, all right, I'm going to write this down. So I just put blank. And then I said, all right, get the next number. And it was like L. <laughs> <laughs> so I write L down. Then they go over to, uh, uh, I don't know, two more things. It was blank L, G, H. And I said, are you guys sure now? Okay, take off your blindfolds. Here's what I got. And not, there wasn't even a single number there. Right. right. It was all it was all alphabet letters. I said, now do you believe in Ouija boards? And they're like, yes, we still do. <laughs> and the, the, the believer says to me, she says, you just don't know what blank F L J G means. That's all. Gibberish. I know exactly what yeah. it is. <laughs> so what, the point gibberish. I'm making is these shows that we try and do, we're trying to educate people that it you're fooling yourself. They don't like that. They they are they they change their minds in the opposite direction. That's why I don't do disclaimers because I want people to believe, even if they know they just paid me for it, and I'm. That's what I do. So I I've been in so much trouble with disclaimers because it, the magicians say, "Hey, how can you do that without a disclaimer? We're supposed to be honorable." And then the the skeptics say. You need to do a disclaimer. But the people who do the best in show business, they're actors. They don't come out in front of before the movie and go, hey, uh, I'm uh, uh, who's a, uh, anybody, anybody who's about to do a part. Yeah, you don't say, hey, I'm, I'm just doing this, you know, Robert De Niro. I'm this is just a part I'm playing. Not not likely. So. Right. You decide on, you know, it's for the individual to decide. If you think you'll get a better reaction by explaining everything, you won't work in the business very long, I guarantee. Because, you know, Penn and Teller had to learn that. I remember the days at the castle when Penn and Teller, people hated them. Oh, my God. They did this one show where they passed out to 300 people in the audience, 300 thumb tips. If you don't know what that is, you'll have to look oh, it up. Yes. yes you remember I that? I know what, yeah. Yeah. And I was standing in one of the bars at the castle and the magicians were just like, we're going to have to do something. This is, they're going to kill us. They're going to make, they're going to make everything bad. 10 years later, they're giving them an award. So, I mean, take it for what it is. And if you plan on doing readings, especially, it's not a trick. It's called empathy. 
Yeah. You listen to people. You don't try to convince them that you're Cagliostro or something. You're just in the wrong lane. <laughs> that's a good that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. You're a good listener and, and you you know, maybe sure. you, your life experiences have been the same or similar and you can relate to that's, something. I'll give you a little tip. You guys who are listening and want to do readings, that's one of the classic things to do is what you do is if you get stuck, just start talking about yourself in the in like the third, what would it be, second, third person? Third person. In other words, yeah, you start start saying, man, I really had, or you, I'm sorry, you really had some tough times about two years ago and you went through a lot and you're a survivor and you just, because we're more alike than we are different and people right. will just agree with you. They'll be like, he is amazingly accurate. <laughs> one, of the, um, one of the books that maybe you can talk about a little bit, um, passages. passages. Yeah. yeah. I brought this up. Um, I think I brought it up last week because I was talking about bringing it up at the lecture. But yeah. to me, this has been a very valuable source of information. Yeah, that's one of the first books I, I had that got me started in uh, human nature, I guess you would say. Yeah. It's not it's not tricks. It's uh, basic, uh, I don't know, what would you call it? it, it I think it's basic uh, life, uh, life segments. Um, yeah. That goes through from birth to death. Cradle to grave. Yeah. That's what used to call it. All the, the different um, phases of your life. That I have a hardback version of that. I, I do too. Somewhere around here. <laughs> I, we have our, I, I have this to just carry it around with me. I, I take this with me. Here's my cat. <laughs> Hamilton wants to say hi. Say hi. <laughs> my familiar. Look at him. He's evil. Evil. All right. Go away. Oops. Sorry. Um, okay. So, so for JD, JD, this is called Passages. Yeah. Really good book. Um, but yeah, it, it tells you all about the different stages of life, um, what to expect, what emotional, physical, um, physiological. Right. I mean, what to expect from other family members and relationship all that kind of stuff it's and it really, really not cool. a magic book it is not a magic book yeah. it is not light reading yeah so don't expect to you know finish this in a weekend it's a lot of information there's but, so many there's so many great areas that you can find out about once you're in the click of uh of uh the professional psychic uh one of the things i got put onto i don't even think it's available anymore but it was called american demographics and it came in my mailbox every month. You ever hear of it? No. It's kind of like passages. What, what it is is it's they make they make demographic maps. And say, for example, you open to one page and it shows the USA and it says uh, a, a national shoe sales. How many people bought shoes in each one of these states? Wow. And you look and you see and it says, you know, Texas bought the most shoes. Uh, of any state, you know, so you file that in your mind and then you sit down with somebody and they're from Texas <laughs> and you say, you just bought a lot of shoes. There's a lot. I see a lot of shoes around you. And they're like, holy shit. You know, and it could be a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. So it's just a matter of the information you have. So why do I need a disclaimer to tell somebody something like that? See, that's why I get in these arguments it's like, they say, are you real? And I say, no, I just read a lot. Yeah. It's honest. That's an honest statement. I've never felt bad about telling people that. I read a lot. I got it from Doctor Who. It works for me. You know? Yeah. I mean, the more you read, the more information you got, yeah. the more you have access to. And when you can relate it to what you see on a person. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the tricks that, that you taught me was not, not just to look at people's clothing, um, yeah, like, especially shoes. Shoes are a good one. Look yeah, at their shoes, shoes are absolutely. Are they are they new? Are they buffed? Or are they yeah. worn? Are yeah. they heavily worn? Um, if, if they're heavily worn, you're looking at a hobo. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Yeah, I mean, you can I'm, have worn as in like yes, they they've only had one pair of shoes I'm in the last ten years. But, prejudice. That's all. Um, like there's there was when when we paired up when you had us pair up during the workshop. Yeah, I paired up paired up with a gentleman that was well-dressed um, and he had loafers on, but they were pretty worn on the bottom because he yeah. had his legs crossed as he was facing me. Yeah. And I was like, well, 
you, you look like, you know, you take care of yourself. You, you like to dress nice and you're comfortable, but you do. I think you take a lot of walks. You know, you really like to get outside. And he was like, you can see his eyes growing. Like, yeah. And by the end of our session, he was yeah. like, dude, you got like 99% of everything you said. You are, was you are a God man. I, I, he was amazed. <laughs> he didn't know how I did it. And I was like, yeah. He just taught us how to yeah. do this. I know. <laughs> and that's that's why I say sometimes we, we teach or we give a lecture or we do a TV show and it just goes whoosh, because people want to believe. They can't believe that it's something that simple. And when you saw the guy's eyes wide open like that, you had to do very little after that, right? You right. could have made a bunch of totally random. You could have said, "Then didn't you have a parrot at some point?" You know. I, then if you well, got it, then then you're then you're yeah. sold, right? He was he was on the hook, and that was it. Like and, and going off of cues when yeah, he, it's a subtle nod of the head. Yeah, you know when I said something that was positive that he could have. You, you can't help it if you're he a human being. That. You can't. Yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> You it's can't really hard to do unless you sedate yourself or something. I usually know. try if if there's a table that's involved. I usually try to sit like this. Right. So um, that's a, that's a cue in itself, right there. For for somebody, I mean, if you can pick up on it, like, oh shit, you know, this guy. This well, you're, le you're first of all, you're leaning forward. So mm -hmm. that tells me that you're listening to me really carefully. Oh. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of books that have been written by cops, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, I forget his name, Joe Navarro. It's called What Everybody okay. Tells You. You heard about that? Oh, one? yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. that's the same kind of thing. I mean, that's how they assess guilt when they bring you into the uh, interrogation room is they, one guy usually does the talking and the other guy just sits there and makes notes about what you're doing, how guilty you look. Uh, maybe you don't look guilty at all, you know, and they get, they get outside the room like Joe Friday and Dragnet and the guy says, he doesn't know anything about it. Let's look for somebody else. So they're readers too. I, I, I have one story I can share to show you how, how, it, how it plays into the real world. You might have heard this one. It's, it's like if a guy worked in a shoe store for 30 years. As soon as you walk in the door, he does an assessment of you, not only for security reasons, but just he has built up common sense like the little old lady has in the circus. He gives you the once over, your shoes, your hair, all that stuff. And, and that's why a good salesperson will just stay away because they already know how much you're going to spend. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a high roller, they know it and they may go over and say, if I can be of any service, please let me know. But yeah. if you're in sandals and a T-shirt, they usually <laughs> won't even bother. Now, is that person psychic? Does he need to do a disclaimer? It's right. called experience. experience. And there's yeah. no, nothing that, you, that you're doing that's wrong because why waste your time with a guy who just came up from the beach? The thing is, sometimes you can be totally wrong. <laughs> totally wrong, yep. I, I worked as a bartender in Beverly Hills, and, you know, I used to see Johnny Carson come in in his tennis outfit. You know, it's like, what a statement, okay? Yes. And other people who wore the scruffiest clothes imaginable. But I knew that they had some money because they wouldn't be in that place if they didn't have money. So, you, you know, it's not always 100%, but it's enough to be able to, Again, play the numbers and right. make state. One of the things I say in my books is make bold statements as if they are fact. Okay, that's all it is to be to be a psychic. And and you don't ask questions. That's why when I see these people on television, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> all you're doing is asking questions. Is this true? Is that true? Is there an R? Is there an M in it? It's like if you were really psychic, you would just know. Period. So the best play is to just make a, a bold statement and go, if it's not right, if you don't see the person's eyes pop out, go to the next person, make a bold statement, make a bold statement. That's how all the, the really early psychics would work. It was just, right. if, the, if the thing sticks, then you just stay there until it doesn't stick and then you move on. And I've seen some really good, <sighs> Yeah. this or guy who's out today, you know, you know who I'm talking about, um, oh, what's his name? He has. He just got a TV show. Uh, 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 Matt Fraser. Yeah, Matt Fraser. Yeah. 
My that guy, that was my guy. Really good. That you've seen him. Yeah, you've seen him work. Yeah. He's pretty good. He's he's good, but he's he's got that that style that you pointed out where yeah. he has he's, an entire row stand up. Right. There there the are show. there are no doubt that he's a scam artist. Don't get yeah. me wrong. Yeah. But I'm saying that he's fast talking. He mm -hmm. assesses cues really fast. And he has his own style, which is this Bronx, New York kid. Hey, I, I, you're not on this. Not, what is that shit? You know, he he makes himself believable by being kind of irreverent with everybody. Yeah. And so that gives him this vulnerability like, hey, he's kind of like my brother-in-law or whatever. He's not like high up into the spiritual realms and all that. And right. I think he's fantastic. I I don't remember the reason why he's fantastic is not because what I think he's doing is right. It's his techniques and his personality is what sells it. So yeah. he's got a TV show. I don't got a TV show. <laughs> We're lucky if I get a kid show. <laughs> uh, you've done, um, we, we got about 20 minutes left. That's um, right. So you've Sorry done to slur, Kenny, just a little bit. No, I'm not. Shush. <laughs> okay. uh, so you've done, that's good. See everybody, he knows the fourth rule. <laughs> yeah, the fourth wall. Uh, so you've you've done some psychic stings. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? About what went into it, and I guess why you went into it. I yes, yeah. I was part of it. Yes. Yeah. I was, but you got, go ahead. We've done a lot, and that is, uh, we've been successful because we finally, how can I say this? When we first started doing uh, the stings, they were under the auspices of CFI, IIG. And I have to be very gentle when I explain this because we worked really hard. And every time we got an idea and we wanted to go through with it, we got pushed down. No, we can't do that. We'll get sued, blah, blah, blah. It's a list a mile long of, of reasons why things that we worked on for a long time were just pushed aside. So Susan and I finally said, forget this. We don't need these people. We're just going to do it on our own. If we get sued, we get sued. Then we'll even have a bigger story. Don't sue us, please. This is just our idea. <laughs> <sighs> you know, so... We started doing stuff on our own based on my background from kind of the things that are in my book. And Susan's always been a really hard worker. Boy, she won't, if she gets a hold of something, she won't let go. And she does a lot of research <laughs> and she's really, really good at researching and mm -hmm. back channeling things. And so we put our minds together and we said, let's start doing this on our own. And she started a whole group that's now a nonprofit group, and you know about that. And so we started small, but we were smart enough to learn a lot of valuable lessons about what not to do. And like I said, you don't go into a, a professional psychic show and say, you're a fraud. You need to be taken to prison. You know, you will just be escorted to the curb. Yes. And one time I was, and it was a very yeah. uncomfortable feeling to be have two big gorilla guys carry me out and <laughs> deposit me on the curb of the Biltmore Hotel in Hollywood. <laughs> I remember sitting down and thinking, I'm not sure how I feel about this, you know? On one hand, right on, man. You know, we've done the right thing. The other side of me was kind of like, well, shit, I'm stuck outside now. I can't do anything. <laughs> so we started to make things that, I knew we could get away with and no one would know because the, the what happens after the show is people, we're there and we do whatever we're going to do, which is in the case of the New York Times article, which you're familiar with, we set it up, we let it go, we didn't make any statements, and then we went back and we looked at all the information and we found out that this guy was using Facebook with us and we had double blinded it by putting up fake face Facebook pages that certain information we were not privy to. We were only we only knew the basic thing of the people who we were supposed to be. Right. That way it's double blinded because a lot of psychics, if you if you do this, they can turn around and say, Well, maybe I was reading his mind. 
you know, and that's what they say if you yeah. if you don't double blind it. So we double blinded it so that more than three quarters of the stuff this guy said were things that we didn't know anything about, but they were on Facebook pages, and it was unbelievable. You know, you you were there, yeah. and then we started branching out and going after other people. <sighs> And a lot of people liked it. We re we've reached a lot of people, but the guy's still booked in Vegas. He has a TV show. Yeah. So again, it's like we don't know where to go next. Where, where we want to go next is get some freaking backing by somebody. Like when yeah. we did when we did the New York Times thing, they were 100 percent behind us. And one of the reasons we were, we were able to do and say what we did is because they have great lawyers. You know, yeah. they just rolls off their back. They don't worry about it. They can say whatever they want. So am I getting off the track? You, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. I just let, I mean, I, I don't know if you're comfortable with it, but I'm certainly comfortable with it. Um, I've already mentioned it in past shows, but um, the New York Times article that he's referring to um, was about a sting operation with Thomas John. <gasps> Oh my God! I said That's it. All right. yeah. We're not. We're I mean, not in England. It's okay. I don't give a shit. Fuck him. <laughs> I mean, he's he. he it, it's all about him. And I mean, you you have you have. He's a criminal. Audio. There's he's, an audio he's a criminal already before he was a psychic. Yes, but there's an audio clip. I think of the entire like psychic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, show and it's he, a verbatim. The, yes. the audio clip. You listen to it and you look at the screenshots of the transcript. It's somebody was probably reading to in an earpiece, but you, if he's got an earpiece, we can't see it because he was. And I mean, when you see his show, you are completely blown away because at least I was when when I first heard about him, because he's too accurate. Yeah, that is the problem. He's almost like pop up two one one Pine Street. You know, <laughs> it just doesn't work like that. You know, you have to right. stumble. You have to sweat. You have to. You know, when when Anim and the uh, mentalist would just try to get the Ace of Hearts, he would take twenty five minutes to get the Ace of Hearts when he knew it all the time. But, but that was is, the show that you were getting. So I mean, there's a world of difference. This is something that that the viewers can watch for, or go see for themselves because you can go. Yeah. It's on Susan's site, right? Susan's website. It's on mine too. It's on okay. my web page uh, or not okay. web page? Yeah, it is my web page. But you got to see the. Uh, Kool-Aid, the uh, what's his name? The Kool-Aid, uh, Kool-Aid, Kool-Aid man. No, the 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 video that uh, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, anyway, if you go to my webpage, and I hope you will, you will. It's on the bottom here. It's scrolling. Yeah, go to it, and you'll see the Thomas John. He's got big, big white eyes. Oh, and, yes. Uh, uh, anyway, it tells the whole story, and it's really funny. I mean, it's isn't funny. that the video of Thomas Westbrook? That's right, Thomas yes. Westbrook, and it's called "Holy Kool Aid." That's yes, it. "Holy Kool Aid." Yeah, great video, great video. But the entire audio, I mean, for verification, because that, that's something that I'm big on. I mean, everybody knows I'm really big on supporting whatever I say. Look the cat. If yeah, you go onto this website and look at that video and get the audio clip. You can literally compare it to the Facebook pages and see yeah. it's word for word. Uh, right. it, it's, it's, it's so verbatim. It's verbatim. And, and this guy is still making a lot, a lot of money. So, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell people anymore. It's like I show it to them and then they're like, yeah, but we're still going to the show. We heard he's really good. It's like, yeah, don't you understand? I mean, is that really entertainment to make somebody break down and cry? I think it's cruel. I really it's do. Not, it's not only cruel, but it's it's kind of it's like driving by an auto accident and getting out of your car to see how much blood is there. I mean, are we really at that point? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, and I don't know if we can do anything about it, but what we try and do is at least make people aware of that they're not spiritual by any means. They're charlatans and they're crooks. And yeah. I've never met one that wasn't. They've just been really good at the kind of subterfuge that they use. I mean, if I had met a real psychic, science would know about it by now. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, Randy's it, it, a really good friend of mine, and he's what has he been around? Ninety-three years. Yeah. At a certain point, you have to say, "Well, what's 
what's likely? What What is more likely that this person can talk to dead spirits or they're just a really good bullshit artist? It's right. simple to me. Isn't it simple to you people who are listening? Never uh, mind. So Never we'll mind. <laughs> we got uh, JD asks, so where do you personally draw the line, Mark, between entertainment and something more nefarious? Where do I draw the line is when somebody is made uncomfortable or anything that makes somebody cry or break down or, or un unless, unless again, somebody is asking me to demonstrate that to show how easy it is, I will do it, but I don't like it. I mean, I did a show in uh, Connecticut and this poor woman was destroyed. And all I said was like, I don't know, grandma had a red hat or something. And she just, but it, through her tears, she said to me, thank you so much for opening my eyes about this. So where I draw the line between entertainment is when it's not entertaining. Like I said, is yeah. it entertaining to watch somebody who's lost their child or, I don't know, is a missing, a missing child, a murder, whatever. Is it entertainment to watch them squirm and, and, uh, Suffer I mean, the, really, emotion, the, the, the emotional response. I love mentalism. I love all these methods, but I don't use them. So, I mean, that's where I draw the line. I mean, if somebody, somebody once in a while back in the day when I was doing this all the time, they'd say, I want, we want you to come over and do one of your seances, you know? And I'm like, oh boy, who's this, who's this idiot, you know? And, and they'd say, you know, yeah, we need to find out where Uncle Bill hit his will, you know. And I just said, no, I don't do that kind of stuff. I do it for <laughs> entertainment. Call any number, open your yellow pages or turn on your computer and you'll find somebody who'll be happy to find Uncle Bill for you, you know. Right. Because that's where I draw the line. It's like, I don't care about Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill is, there's a million Uncle Bills out there. And it all comes down to greed. And, and and having no conscience. So, yeah, yeah I don't I know if I answered the question, but... I think you did. I think you yeah. did. I mean, that, that's... I'm, I'm on board with it. it it's... It, you know, when, when you do, like, entertaining stuff where it's like you're talking about what people might... their lifestyle might be and, you know, what they do in daily business, you know, when you're reading them like that, yeah, it's entertaining because, you know, they're they're thinking, like, how do you know that? How could you figure that out? Right. But when you cross that line over into you're manipulating the emotional uh, yeah, yeah. behavior, emotional That's state right. of that person. Here's the here's the, the 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 rub though, is because that's different for everybody. And uh, you don't you don't really have any business getting into their personal life. But that's what people want. Yeah. And when they want it, you have to be very careful. I mean, this is why I don't I don't, I don't, because when you're messing with people's uh, uh, feelings and emotions, you can say something fairly harmless to Joe over here that will completely destroy Annette on the other side of the table. Right. And given the venue, that can be good or bad. I've talked to people, you know, and I used to do tarot readings all the time. They The first thing they'd say as soon as they'd sit down, they'd go, you're not going to tell me anything bad, are you? And I'm like, why would I do that? No, this is a carnival. This isn't a, we're not in a spiritual ashram. This is a pumpkin festival. Relax, you know. But we've lost the ability to just talk to each other as human beings. And that's yeah. one of the things I love. That's why my book is called Psychic Blues, because I love talking to people. But it's the psychic part that sucks. There you go. Yep. So yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, we we've lost that personal touch that goes on, and that's well, why I, I that like may, doing this. That may be yeah. That may be one of the benefits of COVID nineteen is because now we are talking to each other because we we can't go out of the house, you know. Right. So so all these Zoom calls and all this. Might you know things can change? It's forcing but, us, yeah, to communicate more, and and we're, yeah, we're getting yeah. together. And I mean, it, this is I, I've had. I mean, it, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to actually describe it because it, it. You could say I've had the good luck, in quotes, that because of this, so many people come over Friday night and hang out with me. Yeah, you know yeah. they hang out with me on this show. 
lots and we we have conversations and, yeah some and, families and, have never talked to each other as much as they right, are now right but, i mean my neighbors my neighbors i mean uh, i haven't talked to my neighbors more i've talked to them more at the last two months than i have in the last i don't know 16 years that right. i've been and in here, here's the key i bet you didn't talk about anything psychic to them did you no <laughs> so this no. is why i'm saying we, we need to hit the refresh button and maybe say you know i don't want to waste any more time you know talking about grandma's red hat you know so she had a red hat how many people you know don't so yeah it's it's a it's a it's an opportunity it's horrible to have to learn this way but i think we're going to come out of it if we do yeah with a lot more i mean we just saw what do we see uh, on the uh, facebook page today there's a woman out there who is offering uh george floyd seances oh, man i know it's like fuck it's you capitalize you know? <laughs> tragic event and i fucking hate that i know that when, when when michael jackson died we got into this almost a legal problem where uh there was one medium who was saying she's the only official michael jackson medium ridiculous but then another medium came along and said, no, I am. She's not real. I'm the real one. And we got into it. And, and it was hilarious because, no, I am. No, you're not. I am. No. We almost got sued. And we were actually looking forward to it because then one or the other of them would have to prove that they could talk to dead people for real. Yeah. But a very, very prominent person in the skeptic uh, societies decided not to do it and they made me retract all my statements hmm. so that's another reason i said i don't need these pussies i'm sorry <laughs> oh, 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 oh. wow i think that's the first time that word has ever been mentioned on this I show was just, i was really ticked off because here we were positioned to get somebody to have to come up or shut up put up or shut up and all the people who are supposedly going to support this backed off yeah so <laughs> hold on uh oh it's okay it's just my uh, my cough there, so, there's 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 a known person in the the ghost hunting field that every time a celebrity dies within yeah, like a yeah. day he yeah. is already putting up recordings pretending that he he had a conversation with them mm -hmm. and uh, he's been called out a couple times not yeah. only for being a a, a, a unethical piece of shit um but he's he's been called out because he's used pre-recorded uh stuff and just fed it through his oh you his mean it, it's always the same readings well no he uses like uh audio clips from the yeah. celebrities and and feeds them through and um <laughs> yeah so he's been caught doing that but ridiculous how lame is that you know what i mean i mean yeah. i agree I'm always i am always happy to uh investigate just like you are but it's getting harder and harder because like the, some of the stuff we did with the iig it was like i was hired as a magician to watch for misdirection or make sure that there wasn't any sleight of hand or any kind of uh you know cheating going on and after six years of doing that nobody ever cheated they thought they could do it Right. So uh, one of the reasons I'm not involved with bigger groups is because if you get a claimant, like the million dollar challenge or something, it doesn't seem right. And so it's like, let's mess around with the retarded kid or something, you know, at their expense, because they think they've really got this power. And then you test them and there's nothing there. You do that like a couple dozen times and it's just it's such a waste of time because no one's ever going to win anything otherwise the whole fabric of our reality would be torn to shreds overnight okay i mean think of what it would do to world religion if somebody could move a coke bottle with their mind it, it, <laughs> I mean, it, would awesome. simple. it wouldn't mean anything. <laughs> it's just a Coke bottle. But the like, point hey. is, and this is what I used to tell people. If there's a satellite up there that's a communication satellite, and I could move that satellite an inch off of its orbit, think how dangerous that would be. Right. But right. people don't think about that. They want to they wanna find 
a way to uh, capitalize on it. And that, I just, no more of that for me. I just want to catch these fuckers and make them pay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, so here's a question. JD says, so do you think the million, million dollar challenge is a waste of time? Um, yeah, because no one's ever going to win it. Because remember, a lot of people think you just go in there and do something. Okay. And Kenny knows that what you have to do is first you do a preliminary test. That yes. means you're surrounded by some of the biggest minds in uh, psychology and science and physics and magic. Magic. Yeah. And you, you watch them. And if they make it through the first preliminary test, then you got to test them again. And suddenly the odds are made much higher. In other words, if they're divining for water, they have to figure out a way instead of just one out of six, they have to make it one out of 20. See? And it's not yeah. that they're, it's not that they don't want to have a winner. It's just a million bucks. And if they, somebody really has this talent, it doesn't matter whether it's six, six boxes with water in it and or one box with water in it i'm getting into the technicalities right. the point is it's not it's it's very carefully handled because i was at a couple of them where we had some shenanigans going on and <laughs> i don't know if you were there if yeah, anyone know it, you can you can there's there's i believe there's still videos up on the yeah. iig oh, um, there's you can watch some of these testing and yeah, watch watch wow. a couple of the IIG ones because we work sometimes we work for two years to set up the protocol. And I mean they were tight. They have to be. They have you to be, yeah. Yeah, you, you can't money. you can't allow somebody to just come in there. One time it, uh, there's a video out there, I still laugh about it, where these two guys said that they were telepathic and they could read each other's minds. And we said, Okay, come on down. So we're waiting for them in the office and we're like, hey, they're late. Where are they? And we look out on the street and we see these two guys stumbling across the street with a quart bottle of vodka in their hands. It kind of has a handle on it, you know, and we go, <laughs> that that can't be them. And it was them. And they were so wasted, they could barely sit in their chairs. And here we are trying to be professional, you know, and it was just sad because they tried it and oh, it didn't work. It usually works. And I'm like, yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> I bet it does. <laughs> so, I mean, the million dollar challenge, I, I would never say that it's a waste of time. And I would like to see it reinvigorated in some way. But you don't hear the people who have the million dollars really churning it up again because they know that if somebody could do any of these things they're claiming and repeat it, They'd be, they wouldn't need a million dollars. Famous. They'd <laughs> yeah, they'd need to get out of town really fast before you know the CIA or the NSA comes and locks them up in a concrete bunker, and starts picking at their brains. That's the reality, right? Yeah. I mean, it. it it's just. You know, why would somebody? think that somebody will win that they wouldn't need to do it that's why people say used to say to me if you can really do this why don't you go to the racetrack or one of my which i learned over a long time they'd say if you could really do this why aren't you rich and i would say how do you know i'm not and leave it there and they'd be like oh yeah maybe he just does this for fun waste so, of time i can't answer that until until somebody starts ginning it up and really seeing it in right. a public place, I don't see the use for it. So I want to be clear for everyone watching and JD, I mean, the million cha million dollar challenge is no longer up. Um, They'll still do it though. If you, if you are persuasive enough. Okay. And I do know I that hear. CFI dash IIG, whatever they're called now, the, the, they are offering a $250,000 Price. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. It's I been just going, I going steadily it. up. It was oh, yeah, it started out like a hundred thousand. It, it, it was five thousand. Okay, fifty, a hundred. Yeah, and now it's at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And um, I hate to sound like a wet blanket, but every one of those tests that I was in on was it made me feel sad 
it made me feel like that was another reason I couldn't do it anymore because it's injurious to the person who is having to experience that letdown that they don't really have the gift they thought they had. And when you see that a dozen or so times, I didn't see that many, but when you see the look on their faces when they failed, when they really believe they had this power, it's, it's cruel. It's almost as cruel as making somebody cry on stage. Hmm. So, I mean, who's going to benefit from this if it's just picking on the sick person? who needs some psychological help. I I don't know. Somebody really has something? Let's have it. Let's have it. You know, let, let's Science would know about it by now. But you know what? I, you're, you're on to something. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And it, it really comes down to, if you really think you have it, make yeah. sure you really fucking think you have it <laughs> before well, you do this. Well, I'm telling you, we had people who really fucking thought they had it. And I mean, I'll give you an example. One guy, I had to go, go. This was when uh, IIG had a hundred thousand dollars, and we did a protocol with this guy who was a dowser, and you know that's very popular. So mm -hmm. we said, okay, we're going to set up the protocol. Here it is. Both parties sign off on it. The guy, I go to the airport to pick him up. And the guy gets in my car, and as soon as the car door is closed, he, he says, you got the check, don't you? The <laughs> like, check? He said, I don't have any check. I'm just picking you up from the airport. Oh, gee, I was going to need that to get the hotel tonight. And I said, dude, you're not even, you haven't even done the test yet. You know that you have to do one test and then the big one, and then you get the check. He goes, no, I didn't know that. And I'm like, and this guy had spent his last couple pennies getting to L.A. <laughs> that ain't right. You, people should not be. They shouldn't do that. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say he was set up. He might have lied. I don't know. But the, the point is, and then he, he did the test, right? right? And he was just completely crestfallen, just ash and white, like. What am I going to do? And we're like, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> It was clearly stated. I remember reading because I've read over the, the, the test conditions. Yeah. And it clearly states that you're on your own getting there. That's right. They have to pay the expenses. Otherwise, yeah. you end up waiting forever. Yeah. They can just string you along and string you along. So it's. Right. Right. It's I just have a problem with it. I mean, if some somebody's if somebody comes to me and they say I have this ability, will you test me? Then I'm all for it. Unless yeah. they're. You know, they got drool coming out of their mouth or something. I'm, I'm pretty open. I consider myself pretty open. And what I kind have, of people do you hang out with, Mark? I've had people do that. I've had people come up to me and they're like really shy. They're like looking around and they go, hey, come here a minute. And they say, I, I don't know how I can do this thing, but I can do this. And I say, really? What, what is it? And then they explain it to me. And on one occasion, one occasion, I had the guy come to my house and I tested him and he didn't have it. No, I don't have people like that at my house because he was I can I was convinced by him that he was a normal in every other way. He was a normal, nice guy like you see at the bank. But he had this thing. He said he could I could be in another room and he would he would have a pan of ice and a pan of hot water. And I would be in the other room with my checklist and he could put a hand in the hot water or a hand in the cold water. And I would be able to telepathically, or no, I put my hand in those and he would be able to write down which, which it was, cold or hot. He didn't even get chance expectations. And you talk about somebody, I mean, what do you say to somebody like that? He was, he'd driven all the way to my house. He had the pans and the ice. And I'm like, nope, you don't got I don't understand why it didn't work. And the worst thing is when you have a claimant and you go through all this and you say to them, by the way, have you ever tested that you can do this? And they say, no, I just know I can do it. It's like, what? You know, you've never tested yourself. It, it, you know, it's on them. It really is. It is on them. But the problem is when a national skeptics magazine is making hay out of it, I don't think that's cool. Cause that's just like, and believe me, when we were in Hollywood, we had people standing on the corner coming out of the woodwork saying they could do this and that and witchcraft and we could fly and and a couple of them were mentally ill 
and they were not treated and they were supposed to be on their meds. So, but when you find that mm -hmm. out afterwards, that sucks, man. Yeah. Yeah. That so runs the, into life, the life of a parapsychologist. <laughs> oh, he's, he's schizophrenic. Oh, you, you didn't tell us that. Hmm. Not cool. Oh man. All right. We have reached um, the end of the show. I hate to end on a sour note, but oh no! Well, you know what? You buy my have... book. Buy my book and get a few laughs. <laughs> there you go. What do you What do you have coming up? Let the people know if you have any events coming up. Maybe they can come visit you. I, we <laughs> had all some... sorts of stuff. We had stuff booked. We were supposed to be in Italy. We were supposed to be in Montreal. Mm -hmm. COVID is. I feel sorry for the magicians. I really do because right. they are they are eating it right now. Except for being online, and magic doesn't work online. It's not the same. Yeah. So there's a there's a theater that opened up like ten minutes from me, a magic yeah. theater, and yeah. almost as soon as it opened, as soon as I found out about it, yeah. because, because apparently they have a psychic and not a mentalist. Oh, they have a psychic, a psychic that has a show which piqued my interest, and I wanted to contact them, but they closed because. Of the, the of COVID, so I haven't hey, been able to. You know to get what I'm going to say, don't you? What? You know what I'm going to say, don't you? You would have thought the psychic would have known that. You would. <laughs> you would think the psychic would know I'm coming. That's a simple. A I am simple coming. One. But uh, so, so they're gone. So they're gone, and you're asking me, where am I going to go? I I'm just writing more, and I'm like, you know, I'm doing. I'm doing uh, research into areas that have always interested me, but I never had the time to really dig into them. Like if you watch that movie, uh, and I highly recommend Skeletons. It's not what you think. It is not about skeletons. It's a really interesting little play on mediumship and uh, magic. Awesome. So, and we're waiting to hear from yet another producer who has uh, over in the UK who has taken an interest in Susan and uh, and my my uh, interests, but we we don't hold out a lot of hope because unfortunately they don't get it. See, it's yeah. it, people don't really want the truth. That's why I want to make it more of a dark crime angle and show how really dastardly these people are. We'll see. It could happen. Awesome. Oh, look, Dawn is getting the audiobook. Awesome, Dawn. Good. I think you'll get a few laughs out of it. And uh, it's it's meant to be, it's not a skeptic's book. So, you know, it's meant to be read by, I've, I've always wanted to imagine that I'm on my way somewhere and I'm going through the airport and I look in the Hudson's book and there's all my books. You know, Not going to oh. happen. Not going <laughs> to happen. Well, I mean, for anyone that's watching, if you're interested in, in uh, more of Mark's work, you can certainly go to the website, which is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Yeah, and the, the Wikipedia, the excellent Wikipedia page that Susan, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something fishy going on there. But no, it was other people because she didn't want to no. have a conflict of interest. But I'm that's, very proud of my Wikipedia page. Um, but yeah, you can visit his site. And your are your books available for purchase there? Well, I've scaled down quite a bit okay. because I went through a big move and lots of other issues that went on. So if you go to my website, you'll see the pick of the crop are available. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have, I do have this one. I have read it. Um, yep. You autographed it. You actually, yep. Yeah. You autographed it. There it is right in there. Yeah. There we go. Um, it's actually to my wife because she was very excited to meet you. The first time. <laughs> yeah. So I read it. It's a good book. It it goes through your your journey yeah. through all of this, and yeah. it's very fascinating to see the the behind. The I did that with my mind, ladies and gentlemen. What as the my, hell? As my Mark finale number. <laughs> did you see how I just went like this for a second there? You knocked over shit. <laughs> at, least it wasn't, at least it wasn't your rum. I would be so hurt. No, it. no, no. I would die. You would see me go right off camera like, no. See, that's called taking advantage of the moment. And Geller, Uri is brilliant at that. And every time something like that happens, I use it. I can't help it, you know. All that's right. A great, great book. book. Thank Good. you so awesome. much, sir. Um, we are hoping that we'll get a TV deal that'll be the darker side of psychic work. Uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, it thank was you. like notice I actually I reached out to you this morning or this afternoon, I think. Yeah, and yeah. 
said, Hey, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> Cause well, I that's how it happens. Yeah. You know, I you love know. it. It was a great talk. I think everyone enjoyed it. I yep. think we'll have learned. I some did stuff. Too. And, um, you, you definitely bring a, a good perspective because you, you're not only in it, but you have all this behind the scenes information and just it, excellent. And like I said, I mean, I, I admire you because I've learned so much from you. Thank uh, you. This, and I really appreciate what you've done and what you've taught me. So, well, I appreciate what you're doing and your writings are getting better and better. You're Thank doing you. A great job. So I appreciate it. So All right. you take care. Yep. Um, stick around. I'm going to, I'm going to hit my outro video, but stick around for a couple minutes so we can talk after the show. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Thank you, everyone. And reminder, uh, just for Bye -bye. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, yeah, you can stay here. I usually you like put the guest in the back, but you can stay on. Um, okay. Just a reminder, everybody. I'll Friday see. nights from eight thirty to ten thirty. I usually do this show. We drink. We have a good time. On Saturdays, I usually do three tortured souls podcast with uh, Dave Schumacher and Tim Vickers. We're not going to have a show tomorrow night because uh, I have events tomorrow night that require my attention. Um, if you're interested in t-shirt designs, which have to do with more of a scientific skepticism uh, 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 slant or viewpoint, I have a Teespring uh, store called Scientific Skepticism. Check it wow. out. A lot of designs on there. Um, pretty cool stuff, I think. So take a look. Can uh, I get one that says, fuck you for reading this? <laughs> I can make that for you. I know you can. I can totally make that for you. <laughs> That's my favorite t-shirt I ever saw. In a, uh, in a punk wrote it with a sharpie on an old dirty teacher. I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do a sharpie. I'm gonna write. Right, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> um, so I have a YouTube channel under the same name, Kenny Biddle. Uh, you can check it out. I usually upload these videos to that to that site, and I also have other independent videos where I take gadgets apart. I um, focus on different. Um, uh, claims from people from haunted houses to psychics to other things. So check that out. Uh, my next event is actually in Gettysburg. I'll be in Gettysburg July 24th to the 26th for the Gettysburg Battlefield Bash, with, which is a paranormal conference. And they have graciously allowed me to set up my skeptical help booth. Um, so I will be not only answering questions and having discussions about a skeptical nature, but I will be collecting donations for the Cancer Research Institute while I'm doing all this. So all the money donated goes right to the Cancer Research Institute. So please come out and, and uh, support that. Um, and lastly, if you uh, are so obliged, check out my column on Skeptical Inquirer online. I do a, a column called A Closer Look, and it's all my articles uh, about what I do, what I investigate. And the recent one was part of a sting that Susan uh, took part in and I, I it was a psychic <laughs> in New Zealand where she put up really, really uh, horrible ghost photos. <laughs> yeah. They were just like kindergartner photos. Horrible. I don't know what you was horrible. And that's pretty much it. So All right. everybody, thank you again. I appreciate it. And, uh, I'm going to get this out again, Mark, hold on for the line, hold on the line for a second. And I will be, uh, right back with you. Okay. So, good night, everybody. And remember, Never stop learning.